Note, I'm going to go through some setup and preamble here, so if all you're really looking for is the tutorial, skip ahead to the timecode currently on screen. I'll also link that same timecode in the description, and put up an annotation for those of you that can see them. So as we all know, Sonic Adventure was a launch title for the Sega Dreamcast, releasing in 1998 in Japan and 1999 in North America. By the early 2000s, Sega was forced to abandon the Dreamcast and begin publishing games on third-party platforms. This included bringing over ports of several Dreamcast games, and in 2003 they released Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut for the Nintendo GameCube. Sonic Adventure DX was intended to be an enhanced port of the original Sonic Adventure, with remastered graphics and a new mission mode unlocked after you finished the game. It eventually became apparent that, even though this was touted as an enhanced version of the original Sonic Adventure, it had received a number of unfortunate downgrades. Nearly every single piece of Sonic Adventure had been modified for the director's cut. While early areas of the game seemed to have more advanced environmental effects, as a whole, Sonic Adventure DX goes for a much more realistic color palette, versus the Dreamcast version's deep, lush colors. Aside from the many arbitrary texture changes, the biggest issue was the removal of Sonic Adventure's original lighting engine. It was replaced with something far more simplistic, almost resembling cell shading at times, giving characters a rubbery, balloon-like appearance. Worse still, Sonic Adventure DX was ported to the personal computer later in 2003. Though it contained many of the changes made for the GameCube version, it was missing many of the more advanced graphical effects, making it, bar none, the worst possible version of Sonic Adventure. Except that it gets even worse because it was that very same PC version of Sonic Adventure DX that served as a basis for the HD version of the game released on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 in 2010. The Xbox 360 version was then ported back to the PC for release on Steam in 2011. What this ultimately means is that if you own Sonic Adventure on Steam, you are playing a game that was ported from the Dreamcast to the GameCube, ported from the GameCube to the PC, then it was ported from the PC to the Xbox 360, and finally, ported from the Xbox 360 back to the PC again. A port of a port of a port of a port. And for a version that some would say actively ruins the original game. And that's just how it was. Sega did not seem interested in providing a way to play the original version of Sonic Adventure. But just like how Star Wars fans have obsessively constructed their own de-specialized versions of the original Star Wars trilogy in order to erase all modern changes made by George Lucas, there are now ways to convert Sonic Adventure DX back into something resembling the original Dreamcast release. Using homebrew modding tools, fans have found ways to re-enable the original Dreamcast lighting engine in the PC versions of Sonic Adventure DX, and efforts are being made to port over the original, unmodified Dreamcast levels, restoring the game to much of its former glory. Since we're talking about a game originally from 1998, this modded version of Sonic Adventure DX can run on a wide array of PC hardware and maintain a silky smooth 60 frames per second. Setting all of the mods up can be tricky, but it's not actually that difficult as long as you follow this tutorial. It does take a while though, so be prepared. And don't worry, links to all these files will be available in the video description, as well as a written text version of this tutorial. And once we're done, I'll have a bunch of comparison footage to show off as well. Okay, so first we're going to gather the materials we need. If you don't have 7-Zip, you'll need to download and install it. A lot of the files we'll be working with are contained inside of 7-Zip archives. You should probably have 7-Zip installed anyway, given how useful it is, and hopefully most of you already have it. Next, we'll need a mod-friendly version of Sonic Adventure DX. 
Normally, the only way to mod the game is if you own the North American PC release of Sonic Adventure DX released back in 2004. But if you bought the game on Steam, some users have created something called Better SADX, which will let you mod the Steam version of the game via the mod loader. If you're using the 2004 version of Sonic Adventure DX, head over to Sonic Retro and manually download the SADX mod loader. If you're using the Steam version of Sonic Adventure, download Better SADX instead. Better SADX comes bundled with the mod loader automatically. Now that we have the tools to mod Sonic Adventure, we need the mods. There's two major ones we'll be concerned with. First, head over to ModDB and grab the Dreamcast Conversion mod. This mod ports most of the original maps and textures from the Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure forward into Sonic Adventure DX. Second, you'll want to grab the Palette Lighting mod from Sonic Retro. Specifically, you want the files marked SADXDC Lighting and D3D829. You need both for the Palette Lighting mod to work. What this does is it restores the original lighting engine from the Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure, which makes the game look like it was originally intended to. Now, if you're using better SADX, you already have these next two, but if you aren't, you'll also want to go ahead and pick up the following mods from Sonic Retro. The input mod fixes a lot of problems with Xbox controllers, and Sonic Adventure DX Fixed Edition is an unofficial patch for Sonic Adventure DX that fixes a bunch of minor problems. Again, if you're using Better SADX, you don't need to download these two mods, as Better SADX comes bundled with them automatically. Now that we've collected all of our files, we need to get everything installed and set up. The first order of business is the Sonic Adventure DX Mod Manager. For Steam users, just run the Better SADX executable and it'll install the Mod Manager and associated files for you. If you aren't using the Steam version, then just extract sadxmodloader.7zip into the same directory as your sonic.exe. The next step is what we should do with the d3d87zip file we downloaded earlier. Open this up and extract the associated DLL file into the same directory as your Sonic executable. Now it's time to actually extract our mod files. You should have a folder in your Sonic Adventure DX game directory called Mods, and inside each one of the zip files we downloaded, we should have a bunch of other folders containing the actual mod files. What you want to do is take the mod folders inside the zip files and put them inside the mods folder, like I'm doing here. Do this for the palette lighting mod, the Dreamcast conversion mod, and if you need to, the input mod and Sonic Adventure DX Fixed Edition. When you're done, you should have a bunch of folders inside the mods folder. Next, open the Sonic Adventure DX Mod Manager. You should be presented with a list of all the mods in the mods folder. Check the box next to each mod to enable it. Now, here's the tricky part, so listen closely. Using the Sonic Adventure DX Mod Manager, we have to change the order in which the mods are loaded. If we don't do this, Sonic Adventure DX Fixed Edition will have conflicts with the Dreamcast Conversion Mod, and things will look messed up. Try to think of this like layers. Each entry in the list of mods is a new layer being applied on top of the old layer. What you want to do is select each mod labeled SADXFE and move them all so they're grouped at the top of the list. This makes it so Sonic Adventure DX Fixed Edition loads first, and is our base in which all the other mods are then applied to. As long as all the Dreamcast mods are listed below Fixed Edition, you should be good to go. We're almost done, but first we need to set up our display. At the top of the Mod Manager, click Options. I'm going to run through these quickly, but here's what I think you should select. Check Enable VSync. This will eliminate ugly screen tearing. It can introduce some input lag on some setups, but chances are you'll want it turned on anyway. Check Use Custom Resolution, and then click the button on the right that says Native. This will make Sonic Adventure DX use your desktop resolution, which is probably widescreen. If you don't want this, just leave it unchecked. 
check Scale HUD Experimental. This will make the rings slash time display during gameplay larger so you can read them more easily. If you don't check this option, they'll probably be really small. Check Force Mip Mapping. This is a graphic setting to make distant textures look smoother when they're farther away. Sonic Adventure DX doesn't do this normally, but this will force it, and it generally looks better than if it's turned off. Check Force Texture Filtering. When certain menu elements get resized for larger resolutions, they can look very pixelated and kind of ugly. This option will smooth them out. Check Disable CD Check. This might not be necessary depending on which version of Sonic Adventure DX you're using, but it's a good idea to check it anyway. Finally, it might be a good idea to click Config Editor in the bottom right. Most of these options are going to get overridden by everything we just set up, but make sure all the graphics options are cranked up. Frame rate should be on high, clip level should be on far, and set fog emulation to auto. If you want, you can also configure your volume levels. Though note, there's a weird bug with the music volume. If you set the music volume below 60, the music will be so quiet you'll have effectively muted it so only values of 70 or above are recommended. Once you click OK, there's one last thing you need to make sure of. At the bottom of the Mod Manager, it will either say Install Loader or Uninstall Loader. If it says Install Loader, click that button. Installing the loader is what turns on mods in Sonic Adventure DX. If you ever want to turn off all your mods all at once, just open the Mod Manager and uninstall the loader. Okay, assuming you followed my instructions properly, you should be done! Everything is set up, installed, and configured. You can now hit save and play and start enjoying what is currently the definitive way to experience Sonic Adventure. There are two things to note, however. This is still Sonic Adventure. Expect the camera to get hung up in weird places, expect weird collision detection problems, etc. There's only so much you can do to fix this game, and at its heart, it will still be the same old clunky, sloppy game it always was, just one that looks and functions more like it originally should have. The second note is that if something during this install process broke and it doesn't work for you, I can't really offer you much in the way of tech support. I didn't make any of this software, I'm just telling you how to use it. If you have a problem, track down the people who made this stuff and ask them for help instead. They aren't hard to find. And now, comparison footage between the vanilla Steam released and the modded version of Sonic Adventure DX. Enjoy!